Today, I'm going to show you how to find the tones or codes for a repeater or for someone using walkie talkies with privacy codes or subchannels. It will not matter if you're trying to get the tones or codes for a repeater, be it ham or GMRS, or walkie talkies or mobile radios. The steps are all pretty much the same and I will review those steps with you. I will keep this video short and to the point. I will not waste your time with a stupid intro with fancy graphics and music because I respect you as a viewer, unlike so many of those other YouTube channels that waste your time begging for you to subscribe or click the like button or that try to teach you what the bell means. They must think you're stupid. Now, the easiest way to find the tones or codes for a repeater is to go to radioreference.com or mygmrs.com, do a search for your area, and as if by magic, they will show you all the repeaters in your area, many of the repeaters, most of the repeaters, along with all the frequencies and tones and codes that you need to use them. But if you cannot find the information for the repeater that you're looking for, or if you're trying to get the tones for two people on walkie-talkies or mobile radios using privacy tones, privacy tones, you're going to have to scan the airwaves for them. Now, I would be remiss if I did not mention that some repeater owners like to try to keep their repeaters private or limit the access of who can talk on them. So always be sure to get the permission of the repeater owner before using it, because if you don't, the repeater owner may become very sad. However, no permission is required to simply listen to a repeater. First, let's talk about repeater tones or codes. A repeater will usually have two tones or codes, one for the input and one for the output. And usually, often, sometimes, those tones are the same. And that makes it very easy to find the tone and use the tone. However, sometimes a repeater will have what us radio experts call split tones. That means a different tone for the input and the output. They may also sometimes have two different types of tones, a PL or CTCSS tone and a DCS or DPL tone. But fear not, I'm gonna show you how to deal with all of those eventualities. Now to discover these tones, we will need to scan the airwaves, which means you will need a radio that is capable of doing tone scanning, such as my Wuxin Ocean KG935G affiliate link below. To easily find out if your particular radio does tone scanning or not, read the manual. And the way it works, very simply, I like to keep things simple. I'm not going to try to impress you by using big fancy technical terms. Basically, your radio will scan for the tones while someone is transmitting. Someone must be transmitting on that repeater, or if you're scanning for two people using privacy tones on walkie-talkies, they must be talking. Push the scan button, the tone scan button on your radio, and it will scan through all the tones until it discovers what tone they're using. It will then display that tone on the screen for you to enjoy, and then you can program your radio to use that tone to talk to the repeater or butt in on the conversation of the people having their private conversation. Some radios will even save that tone for you automatically after discovering the tone. To find out how to do that on your particular radio, read the manual. Allow me to now show you how it all works in context. I will be using two radios. I will be using my Wuxin Ocean KG935G to do the tone scanning. Affiliate link below. And I will be using my Wuxin Ocean KGUV9G Pro to do the transmitting with the tones on it, simulating a repeater or two people talking to each other affiliate link below. So, assuming we are in range of a repeater or someone talking using tones, the first thing we're going to do is go into the tone scanning menu of the radio. And on my Wuxin Ocean KG935G, that happens to be menu option number 21. I then hit menu to select it. And on this particular radio, I have the option to scan for either CTCSS tones or DCS tones. Now, since we don't know what the tones are, we're gonna have to guess. So the way it works is we will first scan through all CTCSS tones. Hopefully we'll find the tone. If not, then we do it all over a second time use scanning for DCS tones. So we will start with CTCSS tones 
Some say CTCS, or PL tones, as they're known by some radio experts, are more common on repeaters than DCS tones. Where I live, they are more common. It's just a crapshoot. I then have to wait for someone to transmit on the repeater, or if it's two people talking to each other on walkie-talkies, we have to wait for them to transmit. The radio can only scan for tones during a transmission. I will now simulate that with my Wuxin Ocean KGUV9G Pro. Affiliate link below. Now you may notice that there is no antenna on my Wuxin Ocean KGUV9G Pro. If you think that this will be a problem, if you believe the old wives tale that that is bad, you really need to watch that video. So I will be transmitting without an antenna. No need to save me to leave comments telling me that my radio will blow up or burn up or catch on fire or become damaged because you would be wrong. So we have the radio set to scan for CTCSS tones. We then wait for someone to transmit, which I will simulate with this radio. Then while it's transmitting, I will hit menu again. And you will see it scan through the tones until it finds it. If I stop transmitting, it will pause and pick up again until it finds it. And it has found the tone. It's, you notice it stops. The tone is 167.9. If it didn't find it, if it went through all of the CTCSS tones, I would then have to go in and scan through the DCS tones. It's the same way. There are more DCS tones, so it would take longer, but it's the same procedure. I would then save that tone in my channel that I set up for the repeater in my transmit tone setting, or if you're just listening to two people on walkie talkies and you wanna butt in on their conversation, just save it for that channel and you're done. But you may not be able to connect to the repeater. Some repeaters have what us radio experts call split tones, a separate input tone and transmit tone. So if you're unable to connect to the repeater using the receive tone that you just scanned, you then may have to take the additional steps of finding the input tone by scanning the input frequency. And getting that input tone on the input frequency is a little bit more complicated, but do not despair. I'm gonna show you how to do that now. So because we will now be scanning the input frequency of the repeater, that's the frequency that the repeater listens on, we're gonna to have to put that into the radio so that we can monitor that frequency. And you also have to be in range of someone that is transmitting to the repeater because you're gonna be scanning the transmission directly from that person's radio, not from the repeater. You're gonna be scanning it before it hits the repeater. And this is usually harder to do because the person may be using a low power walkie talkie. And even though the repeater up on the mountain with this giant antenna may be able to receive their transmission, you may not be able to receive them using your little tone scanning radio. So you may have to wait longer until someone more close to you is transmitting to the repeater. So we need to put the input frequency of the repeater on the radio. Now, if it's a GMRS repeater that you're trying to get the tones for, the input tone is always five megahertz above the receiving frequency, always. But if you're connecting to a ham repeater, you needed that input frequency to program the ham repeater into your radio in the first place. So you should already have it. You need to be in VFO or direct entry mode on the radio. There's usually a VFO or mode button on the radio, and there it is. If you're not sure how to get into direct entry or VFO mode for your radio, read the manual. So after reading the manual to see how to get into direct entry or VFO mode, I then type in the input frequency that I want to scan. I go back into tone scan mode, and I hit the menu button again. I then wait for a transmission, and when I see it, I hit the menu button again to begin scanning. And as you can see, it went all the way through the tones, and it didn't find it. So this must mean that the repeater is using a DCS tone. So we do the same thing, except this time we scan DCS tones, we wait for the transmission, there's my transmission, hit menu again. And there it is. It found my DCS tone number 47N. I then input that tone as my transmit tone on my radio, and I'm all done. It could not be any easier. It could be quite a bit easier, but it's not that difficult. If you have questions about this admittedly very confusing subject, 
Leave a comment below.